Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel. Today I have another video essay for you guys since you all seem to really enjoy my last one and I really enjoy making them. So the topic of today's video is something that I'm super passionate about and I've wanted to talk about it for a really long time on my channel and I thought with A-level results day having just happened, GCC results day is coming up and also the new school year is about to start, now would be a great time to talk about the nine types of intelligence. You may have heard of or seen this concept before and once you see the photo it's quite self-explanatory but since this is a video essay I'm going to ramble on about it anyways. This concept was first created by an American psychologist Howard Gardner in 1983. So here is a diagram of the nine types of intelligence. Starting from the top right and working our way around clockwise, the nine types are as follows. Naturalist, musical, logical, mathematical, existential, interpersonal, bodily kinesthetic, linguistic, intrapersonal, and spatial. I'll be talking about each of the nine types in depth, so let's just start off with naturalist intelligence. Being a naturalist was not in Gardner's original list of types of intelligence, funnily enough. That was so bad, but honestly, would this be a video essay if the jokes weren't corny and cringy? No, it wouldn't. Gardner added the idea of the naturalist in 1995, and it involves having a strong connection with our environment and definitely dates back to the roles of hunters and gatherers. Um, examples of exhibiting naturalist intelligence would include being able to identify certain plants and animals by eye, being able to analyse things like cloud formations to read for coming weather, or even being able to just look at a dying plant and knowing what it needs to survive. The next type of intelligence is musical intelligence, and if you're musically intelligent, it means that you'll either have a very strong sense of pitch, be able to play one or more musical instruments, be able to compose music, or all of these things combined. Musically intelligent people often have better sensitivity to pitch, tone, rhythm, things like that, and that means that they usually pick up on sounds that other people miss. Another common quality of musically intelligent people includes humming, singing, or drumming tunes to themselves. An idea exists that musical people are often also good at maths, and this statistically does seem to be the case, although it's not always <coughs> me, and coincidentally the next intelligence on the diagram is the logical mathematical one. This type of intelligence isn't solely based on pure maths, it involves being good at critical thinking and reasoning. You might be logically and mathematically intelligent if you're drawn to things like patterns, strategy games, and or enjoy coming up with and reading hypotheses. Gardner came up with the idea of existential intelligence after 1999, and it's an intelligence which is still heavily researched around to this day. It's all about having the ability and interest to answer existential questions about ourselves, such as what is the meaning of life? I found some further things about the difference between spiritual and existential intelligence, but it was quite confusing and I didn't really fully understand what it all meant, so if you're interested in the idea of existentialism, then maybe that might be worth a read into. Next, we have interpersonal intelligence. If you're interpersonally intelligent, it's like being empathetic, but on a whole other level. You're good at communicating with other people, verbally and non-verbally. You're highly sensitive to people's moods and changes in behaviour and very often never take just one side. You always try to look at the situation from multiple perspectives before landing on a final judgement. Most leaders exhibit interpersonal intelligence, but so can followers. Those with interpersonal intelligence often work well in groups, so you might not necessarily want to work in a group, but when you have to, you're good at it because you can clearly understand and notice other people's motives and feelings. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence, also known as motor skill, is definitely most commonly found within athletes, but it can also be found in surgeons, musicians, craftsmen, and actors. This type of intelligence revolves around having good control of one's physical movements, and as a result, a good sense of timing and a good hand-eye-mind coordination. The seventh kind of intelligence is linguistic intelligence, and with it, you're able to successfully convey both feeling and meaning using language. It's the most common intelligence and it can be used technically, such as in understanding grammar and word order, but can also be used creatively in things like poetry. You're probably linguistically intelligent if you like reading, writing, telling stories, doing crosswords or anything like that. Being good at public speaking is also another aspect of being linguistically intelligent. The eighth kind of intelligence is intrapersonal intelligence, which is not to be confused with interpersonal intelligence. They're very similar, however, intrapersonal is, as the name would suggest, directed towards yourself. If you're intrapersonally intelligent, you'll have a good understanding of who you are, your values, your strengths and weaknesses, and will be able to predict your own emotions and feelings ahead of time. With this knowledge of yourself, you can use it to help plan your future, and this makes intrapersonally intelligent people very self-motivated. They are often, but not always, shy. Finally, we have spatial intelligence. This involves the ability to visualise places, people and things, as well as having good spatial reasoning. Having good graphic skills and an active imagination are also qualities of a spatially intelligent person. 
As well as artistic professions, spatial intelligence is useful in fields such as sailing and aviation. Activities that spatially intelligent people might enjoy include drawing, daydreaming, and or completing puzzles and mazes. And there we have the nine types of intelligence explained and described, and that's not even the end of my essay. In all nine of those broad, vast kinds of intelligence, not once did I or Gardner or any of the sources that I got my information from mention memory. So that made me think, why are GCSEs and potentially A-levels, I wouldn't know because I haven't done them yet, so based on memory? And why are so few types of intelligence actually tested? I mean, where is the GCSE interpersonal exam? The two kinds of intelligence that we're really tested on, if at all, would be logical, mathematical in the form of GCSE maths, and linguistic intelligence in basically every other exam, and potentially musical intelligence if you're taking music GCSE, I guess. The majority of my mocks involve testing my linguistic intelligence through writing essays or long six mark answers, and apart from my maths and science GCSEs testing me on mathematical and logical intelligence, was I really tested on anything else? No. I wasn't. So if I wasn't writing an essay and showing how I could form a persuasive argument or explain a point clearly, what was I actually doing? I was reciting facts. My history exams were disguised as essay writing exams, but what they really were were memory tests. You can write an extremely clear and persuasive point to explain why Elizabeth I was a good monarch, but if you can't remember any dates then you basically automatically can't get any more than four or at least that was the case in my school, and that just blows my mind. Same goes for English. You think it's going to be about being able to formulate a well thought out response in answer to the main question, but if you don't have any quotes stored in your head to back your points up with, then it's game over. These exams aren't testing us on our true intelligence, it's basically a test of how well you can manage your time months before the exams even start, and how many facts and phrases you can memorise in that time. I think that application questions and science exams are good, but even then, if you didn't memorise the information that forms the basis on which you expand upon, you have nowhere to start. All in all, I wanted to send you guys the message that the school system we're using right now should never be what you use to define yourself. After I found this theory, I realised this and it's changed me so much. This diagram is literally one of my favourite photos, because it shows that intelligence is not solely defined by doing well in a test at school. If you're wondering which of these types I think that I best fit into, I'd say intra or interpersonal, 1000%. Let me know which of these types of intelligence you think that you fit into the best, because I'd love to know. And my final point is that even if you don't think you fit into one of the nine types, don't let that define you either. These nine are only based off of Gardner's theory, and I personally believe that there are way more than just nine types of intelligence. For example, I think that wit or humour in general should be counted as one, and you've also got things like clairvoyance. I really hope you enjoyed the video guys because it took me so long to make and like I said, I've wanted to make a video on this topic for ages because comparison and defining self-worth is something that I am really passionate about. If you've watched up to here, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys!